Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market and we're going to talk about what we're seeing out there as far as news. And let's just kind of sort through what's fact and what's fiction and what's kind of in the middle. So we've endured on, especially on YouTube, two years of it's going to crash, it's going to crash. And uh, if you followed that advice much at all, then you missed out on this opportunity right here, starting back in 2019. Going to crash, going to crash. Well, it, it has and it hasn't. So I want to look at some numbers and talk about some areas that got hit really hard. And since everybody likes to compare to 2008, let's take a look at 2008. Then I want to kind of issue a little bit of a warning, a caution, because this is a very savvy audience, that you're probably going to start hearing the opposite now that says there's a boom coming, things are going great. And I'm going to kind of deflate that bubble just a little bit, and I'll show you with some numbers why I, why I think that. So um, if we look here at monthly median sales price, there's a couple things I wanted to point out. Here is the Great Recession that we had. Now, inside of that, you see the peak here was 257,000, 265,000 in 2006, went all the way down to 142,000. That's a little over 40%, 45%. It's huge. And people couldn't get back in for a long time. Well, as people got back in, you can see that we had this huge run up right here. And the reason I circle that is because that was right at the beginning of the year of 2022. And it just went bonkers. And then guess what? They raised interest rates right about here. And so the shoe fell off and prices come down. Well, how far down? Well, we hit a peak right there in May of 480,000, even though rates were higher. These are the sales that were recorded in May from contact tracks that were written 30 to 45 days prior. So 480,000 down to 410,000 overall. Now, there are some cities that I've noticed that they're really getting slaughtered. And I said, you know, they've probably already seen their crash. But it's a crash off this short term peak right here. There are many saying, that they think we're going to get down to 2019 levels, which would be right here. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I'm not seeing any numbers that show me that's going to happen. That would be catastrophic. People that say, oh, these sellers are greedy. Well, if you're hoping for a crash like that, I'm sorry, you're greedy too. Um, that would be bad for everybody, especially since uh, housing contributes to 30%, not 30%, but to a... Um, I can't remember the exact percentage, but the contribution to our gross domestic product is uh, heavily weighed on housing. So that, that's a big crunch to have right there. Now, here's what's really going on is people are saying, you're seeing headlines, and I saw one, Sky in Sacramento, that our listings in Arizona are up 147%. Well, our listings in Maricopa are actually up 222%. So what? A large percentage of a small number is still a small number. See this? We're only at 14,764 in February when we normally should have listings increasing. This is our, not our busy season, but uh, for getting listings on, people tend to put them on in January and uh, they tend to come in a little too hot and then they have to reduce the prices in February. But we haven't seen normal for over two years. So throw that out the window. But when you hear that we're up, you know, 140% in listings, that that shouldn't ring any alarm bells when we're sitting down here at 4,800 last year and the year before. I mean, that was, we'd better be up 140%. In fact, we should be well up over 250%. Before we saw the crash in 2008, we had 58,000 listings on the market and we had another 10,000 that were in pre-foreclosure status. So that's almost 68, 70,000 homes available, but nobody could buy them because people had walked away from their homes. They weren't credit worthy. They couldn't pick them up. So it got worse. Now we've got this situation where we have this rate lock. 
Rates went down to 3% 3 sometimes below the average about 3.5%. You couldn't help but want to go out and get a mortgage with that low of a payment. Prices be damned and that's what people did. And the Fed created this and they probably should have raised rates a long time ago but it's always easier to look in the rearview mirror. But now do you think those people are going to move? No, they're not. They're staying put. Now we've got the people that bought at the peak in 2022. Do you think they're going to move? No, they got a great interest rate. They're staying put. Are they seeing their equity erode? Absolutely. But they're loving the payment. So I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of those people list. Now, are we going to have this huge wave of uh, job losses and people are going to have to list their homes? That's always hanging over our head. So we just kind of wait and see that. I'm not going to attempt to predict that. Uh, recession doesn't always mean that we have huge job losses. Sometimes it just shows up in the numbers and you go, oh, I didn't realize it was that bad. But I'm only saying this because if we really want to get alarmed about how much our listings have, have grown, now's not the time. We're only sitting here at 14,764. And that's not enough to push things. Now, if you look at months of supply, we're still below three and a half months right now. They say again, normal is four to six months, but here we are, we're at three and a half months. So we're not seeing an alarming trend in months of supply. Price changes are interesting. These are price reductions. They're not increasing. So when you see headlines that say that people are continuing to slash their prices, well, they're not. And the numbers back that up. What we are seeing, though, is they're not slashing their prices, but they are offering more concessions. On average, $10,000 to help you buy down your rate. They have to, to compete with the new builds. The new builds are giving you a rate of like 4.25 to 4.5, 30 year fixed. So if you're gonna list your home, people are gonna ask you to help buy down the rate. Now we are seeing some listings that are moving quite well. They get on the market, they price them reasonably, they're getting offers. But we're also seeing that this little spot right here in the new listings, this is the Cromford Market Index, so it's not letting me, my little red pen isn't working on this page for some reason. But back here, look at that. That's the supply index, and this is demand. Look at how huge that gap was. The supply index of 214, demand of 57. Right here, it was exactly the opposite. I've showed this before. This is demand way up here and supplies down there. Remember, only 4,800 homes. No wonder prices went up. What are they doing now? They're just kind of staying in one spot. So you're going to start hearing people saying that the market's heating up, that it's going to get hot, and that real estate's going to take off yet again. And that's what I caution you on, because I'm not seeing that. In fact, I, I track seven-day moving average myself because it tells me what's going on today versus the Cromford market. The Cromford market's probably got the most recent data versus anything out there for Arizona. Redfin's got good data, but it's not today and it's not last week. A lot of the numbers you see coming out now where everybody's putting out these alarming headlines are December. So that doesn't mean diddly or squat going forward. But here's what's interesting. We are starting to see a little bit more activity in new listings coming up. Again, I don't have a pen here to make that work. Let's see. No, it's not. Um, so they are coming up just a little bit. And, but contracts are also following them a little bit. They took a little bit of a flat line here the past week, but now they're kind of coming up. This, again, has to grow at a gap like what we saw back here in the middle. I don't know if you see my mouth. See that wiggle right there? So when you get this big of a gap, you're going to have pricing pressure on the downside. But as long as there's a gap between new, new listings and new contracts, you can't stand on your front porch and say that real estate is going to get hot. Real estate's going to stay this way as long as rates are in this 6% zone, don't expect anything magical to happen. We're just going to plot along. And people are not going to be in a hurry to list probably for a couple of years. Because people are sitting on that 3% interest rate that we'll probably never see again. So they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to increase their payments. Some people now, because they bought in 2022, they don't have the equity to be able to move. So they're staying put. It's not a huge number. But it's enough to keep from adding to the flood of inventory to get us up to a, over a six-month supply. So there's a very strong case to be made that we're probably going to be in this zone for a long time. Now, it's looking, based on the numbers that we're seeing and a lot of the activity that we're seeing, 
you know, one of the things that you can even do, you can get on Zillow and just pick a few houses and look how many people are looking at a listing. Well, why are they looking at a listing? Well, because they're kind of sitting back and waiting and hoping to buy. The number of eyeballs on Zillow has increased. The number of eyeballs on my website has increased. And what Redfin does track is interesting, is they track how many clicks each state is getting. So 25% uh, of homeowners search to move to a different metro area between November and January. The top five states homebuyers search to move were Florida, Texas, Tennessee, Arizona, and South Carolina, while California, New York, D.C., Illinois, Massachusetts were the top five states that they searched from. So you can see Arizona here says more than 8,000 people were searching to move into Arizona versus out of the state. And the yellow ones here, like Oregon, has two people, 2,000 people looking to get out. And Florida's got a lot more, 35,000 people. Most of them are coming from New York and Illinois. New York's got 23,000 people. So there are people looking. So we could have a strong spring, but not a blistering spring. We're not going to have a spring where we're going to have a bunch of bidding wars. Not where we're headed right now. We're seeing just enough new inventory come up to satisfy the appetite of buyers without bidding wars and without you stepping over in showings and seeing bumping into a lot of people. So it looks like spring's going to be um, way, way better than what we saw last year and the year before with regards to being a buyer. You're not going to have to make a fast decision. Um, you're not going to have to make a whole lot of... Uh, buyer concessions. You're not going to have to waive inspections. You're not going to have to put in appraisal gap languages. Sellers are more willing to work with you. They're even starting to accept more contingencies where last year and the year before contingency, who are you kidding? I'm not, you know, good luck. Sell your house and then come back to me. And that's the way this year looks. This year is looking a lot easier for everybody on both sides. Now, if you're still trying to figure out where to price your home, uh, home prices are coming in at that 20 2021 level if you bought in uh, 2020 you're still in great shape but again you probably don't want to move because you refinance so as you're looking at these headlines that are coming out and they give you these staggering percentages of the increase of listings um, they just got to start being honest with you it's just a percentage one of the guys we nickname him the arm waving guy has been predicting a crash for over two and a half years now big numbers 40 percent 50 percent 60 percent not seeing it. Sorry, dude. You did get a little dip here from May down to today that doesn't come anywhere near 2008. And it looks like that party's kind of over. Doesn't look like we're going to see huge declines anytime soon. Is the Fed going to raise rates? Yes, they are. I'm not good at predicting uh, interest rates. You saw me hand my dollar bill over to Pat when we were guessing what was going to go on in uh, January. I thought we'd be up higher than we are right now and we're not so but we're not seeing anything that says we're going to be up in the eight percent range although there are people out there saying that's possible of course it's possible ten percent is possible four percent is possible probably not probable so watching interest rates will tell you the direction of the market the bond market right now is they kind of build things in about six months out they know there's two more fed increases coming they've already got that baked in the cake so it just doesn't point to a whole lot of rate volatility going forward right now. So we'll continue to watch it. I'll continue to track on the seven-day moving average. Not that it's anything that's that dynamic, but it really gives us a feel for what's going on in our market as recent as we possibly can. So I hope you continue to watch. And those of you that have been, I really appreciate it. Thanks. Take on the day.